Hi everyone and welcome to another very exciting session. Uh, today I'm going to show you two, or two of the new features that uh, have been added to codity.io. Pretty cool features. Uh, you can really use it extensively uh, in your projects. First things first is that there has been a new pane that has added apart from you know HTML, CSS, JS panes that you can you know write your code in. We, there is a console here. So if I click on the console, you'll see that this pane comes up and then uh, you can obviously enter any JavaScript expressions. For example, let's say one plus one, two or something even more concrete like uh, console log, you know, uh, high or maybe a JavaScript for loop for var i equals to zero to i less than 10, i plus plus and then just doing a console log i you'll see that it just prints out from obviously 0 to 9 you have the option to clear this and then you obviously have two options here if you want to see logs which is enabled right now or if you want to see errors uh, you can click on this and it gets enabled and you can also just you know uh, resize this pane if you want it's really good for when you're working in JavaScript you want to see what's going on you want to track the state of things you can always console log from your JavaScript uh, pane here so for example if I just type console log uh, test you'll see that it end up here uh, printed uh, or if I say something like if I add something but it's not defined as you can see it's an error it will not get shown here because the error is not enabled so if I enable errors here now if I just press space or enter to rerun uh, you will see that it ends up here as a reference error this is not defined right so for example if I come up here say var this guy equals to high then you will see that console log will enter high here right so this is a pretty useful tool um, you can really use that. The other cool thing that we've added here is something called templates and load from templates, right? It happens that many times while you're coding, you're using certain specific defaults in your, in your, you know, code on your project. For example, let's say, uh, I'm just going to click on this gear icon. Let's say in JavaScript, you want to always use, I don't know, Babel as a preprocessor. Uh, I have some sessions later on what Babel is and how you can utilize it. Uh, but in a nutshell, it's basically a preprocessor uh, that, you know, is using the new uh, syntax uh, in JavaScript, uh, which is ES6 rather than the ES5 that has been around. Uh, you can use this to compile, you know, and preprocess your code. Let's say we chose uh, by Babel or Babel, as they say, for the preprocessor. Or, and also I want to use jQuery 3x almost in any my any of my projects right and let's go to css for example i want to use the reset base which resets all your elements margins and you know paddings uh, and let's say i want to use uh, scss as my preprocessor uh, and also i want to have i don't know bootstrap as a library that i always use right uh, and then i save it right so now I basically have uh, a project that uh, in JavaScript pane, it has Babel as the preprocessor. It also has jQuery defined, right? I know that I will always use that in my, my projects. And then in the CSS, <clears throat> I have SCSS as my preprocessor and bootstrap. Now what you should do is just clicking on these settings and then here you can define this as a template, right? So let's say this is a template. You close this and by the time you save this project, as you can see, it's now saved. It already has an ID. If you go back to the settings, you will see that it is now a template, right? You can also go ahead and name it. Let's say in Babel uh, SCSS project uh, or template. Let's just call it template and I'm going to save it, right? Now, next time when I code to codity.io and I want to do my projects and I you know need that default I just come here load templates and I already have Babel SCSS template I just click on this the page reloads and now if you notice here in the settings in the CSS part I have reset enabled I have preprocessor at SCSS and I have 
the library that I added for the CSS and the same goes for this. So you don't need to any longer every time go to these, you know, settings and add what you need. So if there is like a defaults that you know that you will always use or for the near future you're going to use, you can define a project and then every time you come to Codity, you can basically load the uh, template that you want, right? Now let's go ahead and create something really small. So let's say I have a button with the class BTN and then I have a like let's say hi right uh, here you can see that it's here now I want to just basically uh, give some style so BTN let's get the give a width of 40 pixel and height of 80 pixel uh, then let's give the background of uh, you know maybe tomato uh, and uh, there you go so maybe even 80 pixel on width and 40 pixel so it looks like a button uh, and then I just put cursor pointer so that it's actually the pointer looks like it's a button and then I want to center it in my page uh, in my document so I basically say position absolute uh, absolute and then left 50% and top 50% and use transform translate uh, minus 50% and minus 50%, right? So basically this gets triggered. Now let's say I want to do, I don't know, let's like, I want to know when I mouse over and mouse out, I want to do some actions so that I can show you how you can utilize this. I'm going to come to my JavaScript. I know that in HTML, I already have, uh, you know, the button here with the class BTN. Let me just switch to this layout because it's kind of easier you have all of these at the same time uh, now in my javascript i'm going to say let's define a variable called btn and let's say document dot query selector uh, query selector um, what is this btn as the class right and then i would say my btn add event listener because i want to uh, sort of uh, um, sort of detect the events that happen and I want to sort of operate on the mouse over event as the first parameter and then another function that I say let's say console log I moused over my um, button right I can have the same event handler uh, add an event listener but this time mouse out let's say mouse out and I want to say moused out my button right so now having the console here and the logs enabled you can see that when I mouse over I get this text and if I go out I get I moused out right so mouse in mouse out mouse in mouse out so it's a very good thing for debugging purposes if you want to see you know if something works in your JavaScript or you know if you want to track the state of your application this is pretty good uh, place as to see what's going on right so I hope you enjoyed this one uh, we introduced two new uh, sort of services, console and load template, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, sort of tutorial session. See you next time and have a good day.